Hello, everyone. My name is Spencer. I am the senior manager of teaching and learning at Little Kids Rock. And today we are going to be playing some bass. So get your bass, get your guitar, whatever instrument you have. Uh, we're going to be talking about bass technique, but it can go into other instruments as well. Uh, so let's start by getting ourselves all set to go. I'm going to get the strap around my neck. And uh, we're going to first place our left hand gently on the instrument or your right hand, depending if you are a uh, right or left-handed bass player. So we're gonna start by just playing those dead notes by gently playing our hand against the strings. Excellent, and now I want you to take your pointer finger on your fretting hand and uh, press it, excuse me, press it against the fifth fret of the uh, low E string. So you can play that note there. Awesome. But I want you to keep your hand generally pretty flat against the instrument. When we play guitar, oftentimes we'll curl our fingers a lot. And the reason you curl your fingers a lot is because you want all the strings to ring out. But on a bass, most of the time you only just want one string to play at a time. We're not playing chords like on the guitar, and that's totally fine. Just different instruments, different technique. So we've got that note right there. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to lift up your hand so it's getting uh, that dead note, and then press it down. And let's try lifting it up, and pressing it down, and lift it up real gently so I'm just getting that dead note. And basically when I'm lifting it up, I'm not lifting it off the strings. I'm just making it so it's just pressing gently against those strings. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, and now we're going to uh, focus a lot today on note length. which is how long your notes are. So we can play notes nice and long, or we can cut them off short. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. Playing that note on the fifth fret of the E string, the note A, we can cut it off short by pressing our left hand gently against the strings. So I'm just placing my other fingers down place my other fingers down and I um, lift up my pointer finger just so it's no longer pressing against the strings. And you can hear how that cuts off the sound. I can also mute it with my right hand by just pressing my fingers against the string again. And that's going to stop the vibration. Stop the vibration, stop the sound. So let's play along with a track and let's try doing some very specific note lengths. So I'm gonna play our drum beat. And let's first try playing these notes so they last for the, fur, the full beat, the full four beats, excuse me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now let's try three. One, two, three. Let's try two beats. Here we go. One, two, stop. One, two, stop. One, two, stop. One, two, stop. So I'm using both my right hand and my left hand to mute the note. Let's try one beat. Now let's try as short as possible. All right. 
right, excellent. So using both our left and right hand, we can try making sure that these notes are nice and short. All right, another very common technique that we're gonna use in bass playing is the octaves. Uh, the octave is the same note, but higher or lower. In this case, we're gonna go with a note that is higher. So the way that you play an octave, it's the same all over the bass. We're gonna start with our pointer finger where it was before, fifth fret of the E string. And to play the octave of A, which is also called A, we are going to go two frets higher and two strings closer to the ground. So just two down, two this way, two that way. So it's on the seventh fret of the D string. So we've got A here and A here. I'm gonna play that with my pinky. You could use your ring finger, whatever is most comfortable for you. For me, generally playing octaves with my pinky is the best, just so I don't have to stretch my hand too much. Okay, so now we got these notes. got these two. All right, so let's go back to our drum beat and let's try playing just those notes steady in time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Once you're feeling good with that, you can try adjusting the length. things nice and short muted or nice and long whatever it is that you are feeling all right excellent now the cool thing about octaves is once you've learned one octave you have learned them all pretty much so anywhere we go on the bass if we go two frets higher and two strings closer to the ground we are going to get an octave so if i start right here on the first fret on the e string i can go two strings higher two strings uh two frets higher, two strings closer to the ground, to the third fret of the D string, and I'll play an octave as well. So this is an octave of the note F. If I go to the second fret, the fourth fret, third, fifth, fourth, sixth, and so forth all the way up the neck. So let's practice some of these octaves. We're gonna play each one like this. Always two strings higher, two frets closer to the ground. And we're going to do that for two measures for all the notes up to the 12th fret. So here we go. Play along with me. Two, three, four. Let's take it to the second fret and the fourth fret. Up one more fret. Up one more fret. And the fifth fret and seventh fret. If you want to do longer notes, that's cool. Bring it up another fret. Just sliding my whole hand up. I'm gonna try short notes now. We're on the seventh and the ninth fret. And the eighth and the tenth. And the ninth and eleventh. And the tenth and twelfth. And the eleven and thirteen. And let's go up to the 12th fret and the 14th fret. And stop. All right. Excellent job. So those are our octaves. This time, as we go through, I want you to come up with some of your own rhythms. So we're going to do the same thing where we crawl up the neck. But this time, rather than being stuck with the... I want you to come up with some rhythmic patterns of your own. And I'm actually gonna turn my bass off so you can't hear it, but I will be letting you know where we're at. Actually, I'll keep the bass on and just play, I'll just play the root notes so you know where we're at. But I want you to come up with some rhythms. So I'm gonna model that. So I might go like this. and so forth. Coming up with some rhythms, you don't have to play the same one every time. Get experimental with it. 
Here we go. One, two, first and third fret. Bring it up another fret. Third fret and fifth fret. One more fret. Fifth and seventh fret. And the one more fret. One more fret. to think of the low note and the high note almost like a kick drum and a snare drum. So the bass is kind of like an intermediate intermediary instrument between the drums, which are a very percussive instrument, very rhythmic instrument, to the guitars and the keyboards and the other instruments in the band, which are harmonic instruments, which are giving the tonal center and giving you all the notes. Um, and the bass kind of has both functions. One, it obviously is giving us notes because we can play those notes, but it's also a very percussive and rhythmic instrument. And the bass can kind of match that kick snare pattern relationship by, um, by using low and high notes. And an octave is a great way to do that. So as we're going through, we'll see that same exercise again, but I want you to think of a drum beat. Like if I go boom, cat, boom, boom, cat, boom, cat. Boom, boom, cat, going boom, cat, low, low, high, boom, cat, boom, boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, boom, cat. And as I'm doing that, I'm basically from my, on my, uh, my right hand, I'm keeping my index finger playing the low E string, and for the most part, my middle finger is playing the D string. So I want you to come up with a drum pattern and try doing that as we play through this. Again, we'll do each one again, two measures per each note. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And second fret. Fourth fret, we're keeping things going. And I'm kind of experimenting as I go. One more fret up. And one more fret. And we're on the eighth fret and the tenth fret. Ninth and eleventh. Tenth and twelfth. 11 and 13 and 12 and 14 all right very nice okay now if we're going to try and put this in the context of a bass line we're not going to play every single chord like this when we play a song we're going to be having more specific patterns so i've got a chord progression for us uh, and it's just the root notes. So we've got F sharp, A, B, and C sharp. And those notes are, um, the numbers next to the notes are the fret on the E string where you can play that note. So to play an F sharp, you play it on the second fret. If you're gonna play the octave, again, two frets higher, two strings closer to the ground, so the octave will be the fourth fret. So the number is only in reference to where it is on the E string. The A, is on the fifth fret, the B is on the seventh fret, and the C sharp is on the ninth fret. So we're gonna do the same thing, but in the context of a uh, written out chord progression. So I'm gonna model that for you real quickly. I'm gonna play each one for two bars. One, two, three, four. P. 
repeat the pattern. So let's try that together. Here we go. One, two, let's try it out. So I'm just coming up with an octave pattern up to the seventh fret. Repeat. To the fifth fret. Come up with your own. Second fret. To the fifth fret. To the ninth fret. Sorry, seventh fret. My apologies. Now ninth fret. One more time. Take it around. Send the fifth fret. Seventh fret. Ninth fret. One more line. One last time. go okay so just as a drum pattern might not have to be that complicated to be interesting I want you to keep that in mind as you're writing a bass line for something like this so a drummer could very well impress us by going and play some very complicated drum pattern but would it be appropriate for the song that you're playing? Um, and that totally depends on what's happening in the song. Um, but if I wanted to back up, say, a singer who was singing a melody, um, and I have this drum part going that's, like, super complex, I might it might distract me from the singer rather than help support the singer and provide groove and a rhythm for that singer to sing to. The same is true with the bass. So if we're thinking that way, we don't want to play the most complex bass line. That doesn't make, complex doesn't make it better. We want it to have the most amount of groove, the most amount of feel, so it backs up that singer. So let's try this one more time. And I want you to try and limit yourself to playing four notes per measure. So you're not allowed to play too many notes. So you don't have to get exactly four, but try and think about, about that many notes as we go through. Same pattern as before. Here we go, F sharp on the second fret. Another cool thing could be that once you settle into a rhythm, you play the same rhythm on each note. So if I play boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, cat, boom, cat. Just as a drummer, 
might add a couple notes here and there. But try and keep that same rhythmic idea, whatever it is that you've, whatever it is that you picked. Also, get some short and long snaps in there. Sorry, playing and talking at the same time is not super easy for me. the length of the notes that you're using just as a drummer might use different uh, instruments on the drum set to play longer notes or shorter notes they might go with an open hi-hat sound to get like a longer sound or they might go with a closed hi-hat sound to get a to get a nice short sound you can kind of mimic that um, and working with your drummer um, and talking about the types of rhythms that you're playing uh, can really help you to get in sync and lock in so keep a couple of these ideas in mind as you are writing uh, bass lines, as you are listening for bass lines. Um, the octave is something that you can use a lot in your playing. And focusing on note length is also a great way to kind of uh, add a little bit more character and bring your bass playing to the next level. Um, uh, you don't have to get super technical with it. It's about locking into that groove. Because people would much rather have a bass player that grooves than a bass player who can play all the notes really fast at the same time. So have some fun with that. Uh, please check out the links in the description for more resources and more lessons and to see our upcoming schedule. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, definitely feel free to reach out to us at livestream at littlekidsrock.org. Uh, please be well and take care of each other, and we will see you next time. <laughs>